Going fishing. Busy morning. <laughs> Check. I'm your skipper. This is only my, I can't remember how many years I've been doing this. We're halibut fishing today and I wanted to take a look at what I've got for you here. This is kind of a bonus. There's only two boats in the fleet that have electric reels and the other one's my boat too of the Four Seasons. So uh, I just invested about $5,000 in these puppies so please don't drop them over. <laughs> They're really power assist so they can help you and you can crank it and do that. We'll be out there and, and you know it takes us about uh, an hour and a half or so to get out to where we're fishing. It's about 24 miles offshore. Remember when we're catching halibut you're allowed one per person so we'll be, do a rotation. We have six lines out at one time. A person catches the fish, they're out of the rotation and then somebody else takes over. Um, and we'll do that all the way through the day. If, if there's somebody that, that is incapacitated, can't do it for whatever reason, why, you know, the, the person can step in and help out. But once you catch the one, even if you're on a rod, uh, if he gets a hookup, make sure to call somebody over who hasn't got a fish. So I'll make sure everybody catches the fish on board the boat. With that in mind, you guys, I think we're about ready to go. So let's have a good day today and uh, enjoy the day. Smile when you're on camera. <laughs> and and uh, I think we're ready. Hey everyone, we just heard from Pat Schenk. We're on the uh, Legacy today. We're going after halibut, as he said. We've got a Northwest Fishing Adventures going on. So the motor's firing up. Let's go fishing. Are we clear on the bow? Yes. <laughs> We're good. That's always a bad thing when you're pulled away from the dock and all of a sudden you get yanked to a stop. It's like, oops. Somebody probably forgot to do part of their job and that's almost always me. I always have a fun time with sea breeze. The halibut fishing is deep water, isn't it, out here? Anywhere from 500 to 800 feet down. Yeah, it, it's like... So no anchoring. No anchoring. <laughs> you uh, were mentioning the other day you use your motors to kind of keep us over the fishing spots. If the drift is fast, then we have to either back down on the lines or sometimes I'll bow into it depending on which is the conditions are. And that slows the drift down and we keep the gear down. Otherwise, they'll be hanging way off and we won't be able to keep it down and make anything. But hopefully, I mean, I prefer the drifting. I'd like to just let her dry it, drop yeah. down. So where are we going to find those fish? It's somewhere between the surface and the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll start looking there. <laughs> Bit of a swell, but not bad at all. That's the best news I've heard all morning. Thank you. Pollution, predators, predators, all of those things. Yeah. When you see the blue water on this 
tree there, that's where the edge is. And then you'll be able to see the contours of um, the pinnacles and stuff when we get there. It's pretty interesting. We'll be fishing right on those edges. But they're not quite there yet, but we're getting close. So it's not real defined yet, but as soon as we get there, you'll see the difference. We're going over the edge. <laughs> We're at 620 feet and we'll be drifting inside so it'll come up to about 500 feet pretty fast. So we don't want to get our, leave our gear down low because it'll pick up. So we have to keep reaching for the bottom and then come back up a little bit. And drop them, right? Yeah, yeah drop them. Yep. You don't want to be constantly pounding it. We just got out here dropping down. We got a lot of the Sea Breeze Charters fleet around us. We're about 22 miles off the Washington coast. We're fishing with six rods, electric reels, with Pat and Pat Jr. We're gonna see what happens and see if we can get into some fish. We're gonna drop down about 650 feet. Look at these cute little jellies. And then when you get down there, don't just let it lay at the bottom. You gotta keep crank up a little bit and then reach for the bottom again because we're going to drift and get shallower. So you don't want to land on the bottom or you'll lose your gear. If you feel it come up too much, yeah, just bring it in a little bit. You, always, you want to do it more just with like the rod tip of the wheel. The drift is going to take it shallower. So you don't want to leave it yeah. down. Sometimes we'll even use two hooks and bait it just like we do for a salmon. Sure. Um, but today we've got the one hook leaders, and so we're doing it this way. Gotcha. Just get them in there straight, get the hook plenty far back, and take a zip tie through the eye. Oh, handy. Yeah. Zip ties are the best, man. <laughs> saying earlier, man, whoever invented zip ties, I should send them a Christmas gift because they sure are uh, handy items on a boat. Makes life easy. Absolutely. I mean, he's just. Cinch that jaw shut and keep that bait up toward the front so it doesn't slide back on the hook. Gotcha. Clamp it off and good to go, just like that. Just like that. Right on. We're keeping bait in the water, a couple fish so far on our first little drift, first 15 minutes. Obviously, but... Color. 
color. Yeah, I see it. Big fish Right out of the way from the you can. Yeah. You go right down to it, Doctor. Boom! Hot dog! Seasons is over there. This is mostly your fleet, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, four of both sides. But what's a guide do on his day off but go halibut fishing? We're out here today with Dale Ballard of Finn Reaper Guide Service. And Dale, you look like you're having a good time there. I'm having a great time. In fact, I think I got something going on down here at the end of the line right now. Well, uh, Chinook one day, sturgeon another, halibut the third day. We must be in the Pacific Northwest. And, and we are, and it's, uh, it's a great place to be with all these different options for our fisheries. And uh, it's, just, it's just so great to be out here. Okay, let's go now. There's a power. Oh, look at that. There you go. Pretty slick, Pat. <laughs> My kind of halibut fishing. <laughs> Especially if you're reeling up from 600 feet with a three pound weight, that's not a bad way to go. I thought we had the hardcore sporting crowd on the boat here, Mike, because nobody was using the juice. We got a lot of tough retirees on the boat today, that's for sure. Yeah, I had a couple of bites over there. Nothing that wanted yeah. it quite bad enough. So, uh, any other species that we might actually end up hooking out here today? Um, well, I mean, you get occasionally you get a ling cod yeah. or a black cod. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a fish called a turbot mm -hmm. or an arrow tooth. Mm -hmm. You know what those are? Yep. They're oh, really yeah. ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, but mainly this year, and you get a skate now and again. Yeah, yeah. But this year we've had a pretty high percentage of our hookups being actual halibut, which has been nice because, yeah. as you know, it's a lot of reeling to bring up a turbot or oh, yeah. yeah, a skate, yeah. which are really heavy. Yeah. Those are some big weights. It gets that gear down there fast. You know what I liked about this is it's very comfortable out here. Uh, sea Breeze Charters boats. They're big, good facilities. There's a few guys you're fishing with, so it's kind of a fun experience. These big oceans, uh, they got a great team. Pat, everybody. Great guys to fish with. So it's an area where it drops off. It's called the Astoria Canyon. And it's the, the, the sea bottom just gradually gets deeper and deeper and deeper as you head out, and then it just falls off the just deep, deep straight down. Gotcha. And that's where we are. So it goes from like the edge of it where we are now, about 600 feet, it drops off to like 1,400 feet in less than a half mile. It's and that's like, like into the Pacific Ocean, right? Yeah. Like yeah. right out. Yeah. Wow. And it runs, it's a, the whole Astoria Canyon runs all, all along the coast. I don't know how far north or south it goes, but it's sure. a long way and it just, just kind of runs right, right through there. And we're fishing right on the edge of it because from what I understand about halibut is they come up from the bottom and to feed on the, the, the whatever is getting washed down over okay. the edge. And so they sit right 
right on this ledge and wait for food to fall to them. So okay, that's what I am to understand about these. So but then that's why these guys. We got a lot of boats here. They're kind of yeah. There's the a, same program. Yeah, and you know you can fish different spots along the canyon edge, but this has been our probably most consistently uh, productive spot. There's another spot about four miles south of here where we used to fish and then uh i think skip actually found this spot but we came up just looking one day because it wasn't producing and marked a few fish and started fishing and it's become pretty productive for us so fantastic fish out right there Woo! Five hundred and eighty-two feet to go. <laughs> you feel the burn. Oh yeah. <laughs> Fun fish. Woo. <laughs> it's a okay. Skate. Oh yes. What do I know? Somebody else got a fish? Rob's got one. Two on, Rob's got one. And... Oh. Yeah, I got one. Was me. Using the electric reel on it. <laughs> oh. I'm demonstrating. There you go. That's what I do. You know? Mike was pointing out how this is great for guys that maybe couldn't do it. Still have the opportunity. Here we come.
but what you want to do is, is once you hit the bottom, you crank it up slowly, about 10, 15 cranks. That way you're not going to get hung up. And then drop it back down. And you do it smooth so that you can feel the bite. So, and if we're getting shallower water, you know, that way you're always staying off the bottom, not going to hang up. And then just bring her up again. Just keep doing that. Eventually, you get a hit. Yep, there she is. Good morning. No, no, oh, okay. she... I got you. your husband <laughs> you're not taking the shortcuts no sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was demonstrating the electric I actually wheel. feel for you there now Rob because I know you're just trying to oh, color <laughs> demonstrating I One fish a person or? One fish per person, yeah. yeah. So we've got how many? I think we've got seven right now, and we got one on, so. Not bad. Yeah. Nice. You got us on there. Big Pat. Thank you. Thank you. you prefer Big Pat? Pat Senior? Just, just Pat. Yeah. Accidents do happen, so you know. <laughs> we, we're catching a few today. That's good. <laughs> Every year, you guys get some opportunities, right? right. Yeah, it's, it's a, we have a pretty small poundage window here in Columbia. We, we didn't do a lot of halibut early. We were all salmon fishing, and then as the fisheries were depleted or the seasons were cut short, we branched out and started doing other things. Unfortunately, they based the halibut quota on, on uh, how many pounds you had caught in previous years. And so that's why we're, you know, we've got a good fishery here, but not much quota <laughs> because of the earlier years we didn't fish. Sure. So would but, you advise folks to, to schedule even a year ahead or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> as long as it's not what? Velma. Velma? Velma. Yeah, Velma would not be the best. No. Who Ooh. else has a fish on the deck? From, it was up front. Who got the one that was up front? Hey, there's a fish. Everyone's 
got their fish. I lost mine. <laughs> it wouldn't be an episode of Northwest Fishing Reports without a fish on, without fish it. off. That's right. <laughs> without me losing at least one fish. Pretty fortunate day on the water today, the way the conditions have been. Oh man, isn't this great? Mm. I mean, this is what it's all about, getting out here in the water like this. Beautiful day, seeing all the boats around us. Everyone's catching fish out here. Great group of people at Seabreeze Charters. And uh, if you're wanting to book a trip out at Iwako, that's the outfit we recommend. I mean, we've been with them for years now and no complaints. They do a great job. Some of the benefits of uh, coming out here on, with the charter is all the bait gear is provided. You don't have to worry about those kind of things. Your catch will be cleaned and packaged for you. Big comfortable boats, bathrooms for the ladies, and um, yeah, stay dry and warm. We're gonna run back up to the top Any of the drip, that? so I have a problem with that. Okay. I'm gonna use my handy dandy with. little rock to plug in here. Plug that in like so. Turn this on. And no fuss, no muss. Look! I, oh, oh, that's yeah. a fish! That looks like fish. something for sure. That's five! That's five, Pat! That's five, baby! Look at it! Whew! Yeah, uh, yeah. Doing it old school from yeah, 600 gonna, feet. Three that. pounds of weight and a, yeah, they just a I don't know, 20, 25 pounds of it. I hope. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, that's I love how you uh, have to make a point of that. <laughs> You're reeling it in. Okay. It's a good drift there, Pat. We had this before, it messed up, so you Yeah, it's like <laughs> nothing, 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 and then bam. Four yeah, rods, four rods going off at once. Oh we got oh we got one on that one too, huh? Three on? Four. Four? There's one on the back side. Oh wow. Unless we're all tangled in the one knot together. <laughs> we're all fighting each other. Was it off? I gotta say, that plug looks tempting. <laughs> Remember to call out color. Come on, Mike, you're only 10th of the way there. Uh, I got a ways to go yet. Fish out of the yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. There's no howl around though. <laughs> that is crazy. I think this one might be a good one? not as big as yours. You got the fish of the day. We'll see. Right on. Mike, <laughs> hey. how's that arm doing? You feel the burn? I am feeling the burn. <laughs> Another hour, you'll have it up here, Mike. <laughs> I'm trying to channel your grandma. <laughs> oh. Oh.
Mike, one thing I learned a long time ago on the halibut fishing. What's up? Let the boat do the work. So just hold the rod steady, reel as the boat goes down, reel fast down. Then you can slow up, reel fast. So it's doing the same thing as you pumping, only it's doing all the work. That makes sense. It's a great tip, Pat. Yeah, you know. I've been doing this a lot of years. <laughs> You might know a thing or two, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and then we got one on up here, too, so... Stunt double! <laughs> yeah, right. He needs his, his study to come in. <laughs> Switch out a, little, a, a guy in a mic wig. <laughs> oh, I see it, Mike. You're there. Just keep him coming. Another... another 200 feet you'll have it, I see it down. Mike up. fish, Mike. Up, 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 raise him up, 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 up. <laughs> Almost to the neck. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's not bad. It's not a rob fish, though. Well, you can't all be rob. You can't all be rob. There's only one. <laughs> this is why you come to Ilwaco, go fishing with Sea Breeze Charters. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Thanks, Pat. You what a bet. great day. <laughs> You bet. We'll see you guys on the water yeah. and online. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. You guys did a great job. Another successful day. We made it back to the port. <laughs> and all my customers came back with me. It's a good one.